This video provides a tutorial question on a heat exchanger. The reason we have this, this uh, video is so that students will have a tutorial question they can try by themselves. Therefore, it's very important that students attempt this question before they look at the parts of the video that go through a worked solution. And then they know how they're getting on. Just a reminder of the context before we start. We're looking at a heat exchanger and we've given you a diagram here. And what you'll notice is there's some cold liquid coming in, maybe at temperature T in, and there's a hot liquid going out, perhaps at temperature T out. We've got a mixer and therefore we make an assumption that the temperature within this tank is T out throughout. We have heat supply that comes through this heater. Now we're assuming that the heat supply all comes from the condensing of steam. Okay? Um, for simplicity, we might use water, but in general, the liquid going in will have a specific heat, Cp, um, a density rho, and the volume of the tank is V, and you'll notice this lambda actually goes with the steam. That's the latent heat of the steam which provides the heating. So that's the context. Um, which is fairly standard and now what we're going to do is move to the tutorial question. So we want you to derive a model for a heat exchanger with the following parameters and hence do a sketch for the response. So we want a step change in the input temperature from 15 degrees to 20 degrees. We want a step change in the steam flow, remember the steam is providing heating, from 5 kilograms a second to 20 kilograms a second. And we want to consider what happens if both of these steps happen at the same time. Now the data we're going to give you, volume of the tank 10 meters cubed, flow of water through the heat exchanger 0.2 meters cubed per second, latent heat of steam 2.3 times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram, density of water 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, and specific heat of water, 4,200 joules per degree. Now, at this point, we need to pause and say, try the question by yourself, because hereafter, we're going to go to the work solution. So you don't want to do that until you've had a good attempt at doing it yourself. Here we go then with the answer. The first thing to do which has been discussed before, is to do an energy balance. And we're doing it in terms of energy flow, or joules per second. So first of all, the rate of change of energy stored in the tank is the density times the volume, so that's the mass of the water in the tank. We've got the specific heat of the water in the tank, and then we've got the rate of change of temperature with time. So you'll notice that tells us What's the rate of change of energy stored in the tank, or heat energy? Now, that's got to balance the energy supply. So what have we got? We've got density of water times the flow rate of water times the specific heat of water, and we have temperature of the inflow minus temperature of the outflow. So that's how much energy is being supplied by the flow of water coming into the tank and then out the other side. And we also have energy supplied by the steam, so we have the latent heat times the uh, flow rate of the steam. So there's our energy balance. What do we do next? Well, before we start, we want to find the steady state. So what's happening before we apply any step changes to T1 or to Q? So in steady state, we've got dt, dt, equals naught. So if I take that, then what I've got is rho F C P T1 minus T plus lambda Q equals naught. Or if I rearrange this, then I've got T for the output equals, now I'm going to do a divide here to make life a bit easier. So you're going to have T1 and then you're going to have plus a lambda over rho F C P times Q. Now what I haven't done yet is denoted that we're talking about steady state. And the way we normally do that is by putting like a subscript S 
down here. So if I put that subscript, I can now tell that this expression tells me what the steady state is. So for a steady state steam flow and a steady state input temperature, I can work out what the steady state output temperature will be. And I'm going to use those steady states in a minute. What do we do next then? Next we want to write the expression in terms of deviation variables. So let's write what the deviation variables are. We've got things like Ti equals Ti01 S plus Ti dash. We've got T equals Ts plus T dash and Q equals Qs plus Q dash. So we're writing the variables as their steady state plus a deviation about that steady state. So what I'm going to do now is rewrite the energy balance equation but in terms of the deviation variables and this will be quite a long expression but let's not worry about it. So we've got rho v cp and then we've got d dt of ts plus t dash and what's that going to equal? We've got rho f Cp, and then we had the temperature in, which was Ts plus Ti dash minus Ts minus T dash, and then we had the steam flow, which was lambda Qs plus Q dash. <laughs> now what I can do next is I can say, aha, on the previous page I noticed that there was a balance at steady state. So I'm going to remove all the terms that can cancel from the steady state expression. And what I'll do is I'll just go back to the previous page so you can see that. There it is. You'll see the balance equation marked here. OK, if you put subscripts S's in. So if we go back, what I can do at this point now is I can say that term, that term and that term all cancel each other using that expression. So what do I... Oh, and this one goes because the derivative of a steady state is zero. So what do I get left with? Rho V C P times DT dash DT equals Rho F C P into T I dash minus T dash plus lambda Q dash. So now everything is written in deviation variables about a steady state, which makes my life just a little bit easier. Now a final change that I'm going to make is to uh, rearrange some of these variables in order to get the system into what you might call time constant form. So what I want to do is divide through by this component here so the coefficient of the t's is just 1. So if I do that, if I divide through out by rho fcp, I get v over f into dt dash dt equals ti dash minus t dash plus lambda over rho f c p into q dash. So that's sort of in a time constant form. However, what you'll notice, and I'll use red, is we actually have two inputs. We've got an input which depends uh, of, of the input temperature, which may change, and an input of the steam flow. So there are two different inputs which have an impact on the temperature of the output. OK. So now we've got our expression. You'll see that all I've done here is rewrite what was um, on the previous page. So we've got it. Now I'm going to put in my data. So we had V equals 10, flow rate 0 0.2, latent heat 2.3 times 10 to the 6, density 1000, and CP 4200. So what can I do? I can work out various numbers. So V over F is going to be 10 over 0 0.2. And what's that going to be? Uh, that's going to be 50. OK, next I can do lambda over rho f cp. So what's that going to give me? It's going to give me 2.3 times 10 to the 6 over 10 to the 3 times 0 0.2 times 4.2 times 10 to the 3. 
and that's going to give me 2.74. Okay, and then I can also do my steady state expression. So you'll remember um, from the previous pages what was the steady state. We need to remind ourselves of that. So we had the steady state TS equals TIS plus and what was it? It was lambda over rho FCP into QS. So if I put the numbers in here, what are we going to get? Well, TIS was 15, and then we've got plus 2.74, and Q was 5, so that's times 5. So the original steady state temperature was 28.7 degrees. OK. <laughs> So finally, what we're going to do is put this data into the differential equation we've got at the top. So I'm going to go back to the top of the page. So we see what have we got in terms of devi deviation variables. So we've got 50 dt dash dt plus t dash equals ti dash plus 2.74 q dash. So I've solved for the model of the system and put in the numbers. And the final thing to do might be to do some sketches. So first, we just notice there's a typo there. That should say 50. OK, so we've got, I've just rewritten the uh, expression out here. I've reminded you of what the steady state temperature was. I've reminded you of the step change in the inlet temperature is 5 and the step change in the steam flow is 15. So if we do a sketch, or in fact before I do that, let's just notice that 2.74 times Q dash, what's that going to be? Well you'll see you've got 2.74 times 15, and I think if I try and do that in my head I'm going to make a silly mistake, but it's going to be about 40. You can put the exact numbers in yourself if you want to be precise. So what have we got? First of all, we've got a time constant of 50. So let's mark a scale on the bottom axis in terms of the time constant of 50. So there you are, 50, 100, 150, 200. Now, if I just have the step change in the input temperature, that's this 5, you can see that T dash is going to go to 5. So let's mark a 5 here. And how quickly is it going to do that? Well, you'll notice it settles to within about 2% after 200 seconds. So you're going to end up with a curve somewhat like that. So that's for the T dash equals 5. What happens if I just have a change in steam flow of 15? Well, we notice that gave a temperature change of about 40. Same time scale. So I'm going to end up with a plot that looks a bit like that. To apologise, my graph scales aren't perfect. And what happens if I get both together? Well, if I get both together, then clearly the steady state is going to go to t equals 40, oh sorry, t dash equals 45. I won't add that on because we've run out of space on this particular page. So in conclusion, we've given a tutorial question and work solution for heat exchanger system, and we've included the use of deviation variables.